bunch of opportunities coming at you and you're not sure exactly what you should focus on. You have Toastmasters on Wednesday night, maybe you got friends to movies with a friend. You have a whole, if you're an entrepreneur, you got a bunch of projects for work coming in, you don't know which one to take and which one to pass up. You're a busy person, right? You don't know where you should focus your time. I remember coming back from a client last year and I realized on the drive back, I was just going up there for a sales meeting, and I came back, all of a sudden it looked like we were gonna get a huge project. But the project had all these things that were making my stomach hurt. They wanted it done in four weeks, and it was more like probably a three month project. They had a, a uh, the scope was changing just during the hour that I was talking to them, never mind during the month long that we were gonna take on the project for. And this particular client was known to be really hard to deal with, and very demanding, always asking for more stuff on the weekends and everything. And I wasn't sure what we were gonna do, if, should, if I should quote the project or just let it go. So I walked into my boss, Paul's office in the morning. And Paul is a big burly guy. He's a Native American background. And he's calm in all situations. He's got a deep voice, very calm always. I heard this story about Paul one time that they're in Snowmageddon, remember that two years ago? Mm -hmm. He was driving to work in his Mercedes and he was going like sideways. There were two people in his car, they were both screaming. And they looked over at him and he was going, <laughs> was totally focused on him. They thought they were about to die and he was just focused on how he had to turn things up. So that, that's Paul. I walked into his office, I was kind of out of breath, I said, Paul, Okay, came back, got this big project, but I don't know, it's, they're, they're changing the scope already, I don't know what's gonna happen, and they want it done in four weeks, I, I don't think we can do it in four weeks, I, I'm just thinking maybe we should just pass it up, I don't know, or maybe we should take it, it's gonna be a huge project for the year. I said, Brian, what would you do, what's your, what's your recommendation? I don't know, Paul, that's why I came to you. I'm, I'm asking you what's your advice. I, I don't know how, how it would pick. Well, how do you normally work your way through these sorts of problems? I, I don't have a, a process or anything, Paul. I just like try to figure out what best information I have and then pick it. Brian, you, you gotta have a, a, some kind of a process for figuring out how to pick an opportunity. If you have that process, you can make a rational decision. Uh, so that was a big point, a big tip from Paul. And so what I've learned from him is that if I go through a process that I can come to figuring out uh, a better solution. So what you'll learn today is how to, how to work through your opportunities. There's three steps to finding your best opportunity. And we're gonna talk through the first step today. But the three steps are to analyze, or to frame the problem. The second step is to characterize the, the opportunity. And the third step is to act, or not act. So the first part, analyzing the problem. This is a little deeper than it sounds. So it's really about trying to establish what the best case and the worst case could be for that particular opportunity. This, this seems like a simple thing, best case, worst case. But it, it can get a little bit deeper. A lot of times people tend to focus on one thing or the other. Either the worst case, they're focused on that, that risk, but they don't think about the best case, or they're only focused on the best case and they don't think about what could go wrong. I'll give you an example of, of something that I found really interesting. Uh, there's some investors here, and I'm sure other people followed Facebook, the Facebook IPO. There's so many opinions on whether or not to invest in the Facebook IPO. We kind of saw what happened, but beforehand, half the articles you read said, IPO, that Facebook's gonna take off, and the other half said, it's just gonna fall. So I saw one analysis. People, you sort of know what the, what the worst case scenario is, right? That it could become another friendster, or it could become, it basically could go out of business. So the worst case is you put this money in, 
and you'll lose everything you invested. That's pretty easy. So what's the best case? The best case, most people think, well, the best case is I could get rich, right? But actually, let's try to frame the problem using some uh, rational thinking and other examples out there. So the analysis I saw said, imagine that Facebook at its current price valuation were to become the biggest company in the world, biggest, most profitable company in the world in 10 years, which right now is ExxonMobil. So if they were to become that size in just 10 years, which is pretty optimistic, right? You would receive 20% a year on your investment. And the analysis said, that doesn't probably sound as optimistic as you thought it would be. 20% a year is an amazing for the fact that you could lose everything that you invest. And suddenly, you can start to frame the problem. Now, you can do this with other things. For instance, if you're starting a business, how much should my product sell for? How much profitability will, will I be able to make? You can look at other examples out there in the world today and start to put some rough numbers. OK, I should get 30 to 50% profitability. Or if you're, you've got a job now or you want, and you want to start a business, well, what's your low and high on your income for next year? And how can you possibly ride that out? Once you are able to frame the problem, then you'll move on to the next step of characterizing the opportunity. And we'll talk about that next week.